Good to speak with you again. Yes, yeah, wonderful to be here with you as well. So there are many philosophical or scientific questions that I would like to ask you, but I wanted to ask you about the topic of suicide and suicide prevention. All right. What would you like specifically to talk about? Why is it so prevalent in humans and how can we tra work as a society to prevent it or um, reduce it in our society? Well, as you have moved forward from the way that you used to live before technology came along, people would live more in communities and before you had big cities where people were separated and living in their apartments you had much more of an access to your neighbors and it was more common to be a part of a group whether it was your family or the community in which you lived and that made it easier for people to feel supported and connected ever since you had your industrial revolution and started to create these big cities and these jobs that people do that they don't really care about but they need to do just to survive and then go home to their empty apartment that that is the scenario that is a recipe for someone getting isolated enough to think that the ending of their life is the ending of their pain 
people have also moved further and further away from their emotions as they've been taught to use their minds and their minds almost exclusively and that getting something done was more important than uh, stopping to process an emotion and all of that programming has caused so many to just push their emotions down and push their emotions down until they eventually hit a breaking point where uh, they just cannot hold those emotions back and the flooding of all of that energy at once can lead one to want to commit suicide as well. So the prevention, the answer is to seek out more of a sense of community, to try to build community, to try to bring people together, and to demonstrate through your example that feeling one's emotions is a good thing. Encourage others to feel their emotions. Ask people about their emotions, how they're actually feeling and talk about what's going on with you and your emotions. I guess for people that it's kind of hard to deal with their emotions, um, what would be some ways to improve in that area? Well, they need to meditate. In other words, they need to slow down their minds and their actions long enough to become aware of what they're feeling. Getting out into nature can also help because uh, they're bound to have less to think about and less to do and the the energies of nature are supportive of them being in their emotional state i was watching a video by terence mckenna um he was talking about um his experiences with uh, dmt and speaking with little elves and um, I guess use of psychedelics. So is there a certain dimension where these beings exist? And is it possible to experience that dimension without the use of um, drugs? Yes and yes. The elves are member are members of the fairy realm. And the fairies exist in the fifth dimension. So the fairies are where you are all going. And it is possible to see into the fifth dimension by raising your vibration where you are in the fourth. You can access the fifth without drugs, without altering your consciousness with anything other than your breathing, your focus, and you can open up to all sorts of beings and experiences just by being willing to sit and focus and breathe and raise your vibration. What are some spiritual or new age misconceptions? I guess there could be quite a few, but um, some of the more popular ones or prevalent? That there's going to be a, a split. That there will be two Earths. And that the bad people will be left behind on the third dimensional Earth and the good people will be able to ascend to the fifth dimensional Earth. That's perhaps the most damaging one that you have. And I read some stuff online where it's talking about a new earth versus, I guess, a 5D earth that already exists. So are we 
in our current reality, are we going to use technology or our constant consciousness to change our current re- reality to become a better earth or yes. is it already exists you're transforming it's both really okay because everything already exists but you're you're going to have the experience of transforming the earth that you're on rather than getting on a ship and going to a different earth okay how are the children doing and I guess will I be a part of their lives at some point they're doing great and yes you will they're playing, they're having fun, they're learning, they're readying themselves for this earth experience and sharing uh, their lives with you and the other children. And they're very much looking forward to it. That's great. Yes. Will there be projects such as getting um like food water shelter clothing to people or and um i guess cleaning up pollution and trash and i guess working with physical ets in a more yes uh, close manner yes and that will be a good way for humans to start to warm up to them is by having them show you that they have some solutions they have some better ways of doing things they have some things to teach you and offer you and when the more skeptical people can see how ets are working with you in a positive way and getting a positive result then they will start to warm up to the contact and the new world that they're living in Is the quantum financial system a thing or the St. Germain fund a thing or is it sort of um, wishful thinking or I I was just kind of wondering how that would work. It's wishful thinking. Okay. It's it's not – you're not moving into a a time where some magical event is going to cure or – relieve all of the issues that you have with your economy it's going to be much of a much more of a slow process of empowering people getting people to step out of the system getting people to manifest what they want to manifest rather than thinking in terms of always having to work with money so it's about teaching people how to feel more empowered within themselves rather than just giving everyone a handout. What else is going on in the galaxy right now, in the Milky Way galaxy? Well, there's a lot of talk of what to do about this upcoming solstice date that you have and what types of energies and events are going to serve humanity the most since there's such a great expectation for major changes to occur. Should humanity fear artificial intelligence or its progression? It should be used appropriately and The answer is no, because the only time that you would need to fear something like that is if you're holding a lower consciousness. So as you you don't seek to have AI solve all of your problems, but instead you continue to work on yourselves and raise your vibration, then the reflection you'll get from the artificial intelligence that you do utilize will be that of a higher consciousness as well. And you won't have those sci-fi movie scenarios where the AI is looking to take over in the way that humans have looked to take over other humans uh, throughout history. So as you move past that first, 
that level of consciousness, then you don't create beings that would reflect that back to you. Okay. I think one of the um, previous uh, meetings we had, I guess I was hoping, I guess this wishful thinking that I would, you know, maybe I'd find someone like a twin flame union or something um, where it would be like a special relationship um, that's predetermined, sort of like a Disney movie thing. And I guess there maybe there are other people that are putting their beliefs onto the twin flames. Um, could you talk more about that? And I guess pers- what, uh, what that means personally for me as well. Well, you can have a twin flame relationship and or a soulmate relationship. And both exist for U.S. possibilities. A twin flame relationship is typically a shorter one where you have a passionate encounter and you come together and push each other's buttons a lot and do a lot of growing and a lot of purging and come to a lot of recognition of what you've been holding on to that doesn't serve you anymore. Or you can ease your way into a soulmate partnership where you feel whole and complete and so does your partner. And you don't feel the need to push each other's buttons. And there's still lots of love and lots of passion, but it's much more of a comfortable, easy type of flow than with a a twin flame where it's much more of a back and forth kind of situation. A lot of pushing and pulling. So for you, we suggest that you align yourself with the idea of being with a soulmate, someone that you're very comfortable with, someone that you traveled with throughout many lifetimes and whose energy you would recognize right away and put yourself in the vibration of that type of experience, that type of romantic partnership, and you will find yourself in it. And don't worry about what other people are saying about Twin Flames. Okay. Is there anything that you would like to talk about? We would like to thank you for receiving us and our messages as well as you do. We look to those like you who are so open and receptive to carry the intentions that we hold for humankind and the fact that you are able to uh, assimilate the energies that we send to you is very encouraging as well and we want you to know that there will be more and more people waking up around you to share in this experience with you and to make it more of a communal experience for you. That's great. That's very exciting. And I love you guys very much. We love you. Yes. We are the Arcturian Council and we have enjoyed connecting with you.